and good Tuesday evening. You have found the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's the edition for, uh, what is today, June 22nd already. We've only got a week and a day left in the month of June. A quieter day today, a dramatic change compared to yesterday, especially when we talk about the dew points. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the dew points this evening and why we use that measurement much more than relative humidity. Chancing are if, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're scientifically savvier than maybe the average person, but still, a little Science 101 for you this evening. If you uh, think of our atmosphere as a, a glass, a drinking glass, well, in the summer season, warm air can hold more moisture than cold air can, so we've got a bigger glass in the summer season, maybe a 12-ounce glass, say. Well, in a, on a typical summer afternoon, maybe that glass is half full. In other words, the relative humidity is 50%, and in a 12-ounce glass, that's 6 ounces worth of water. Now, in the winter season, when it's cold outside, cold air cannot hold as much water vapor as warm air can. So our glass is smaller. Maybe it's a 4-ounce glass. It's very small compared to that 12-ounce glass. Well, it may be full, but that still only means there's 4 ounces of water present in that glass. That's a smaller amount of water than in the bigger glass in the summer season. It's all about the amount of water, or in the case of the atmosphere, the amount of water vapor, that we are talking about. So we would never say that a 22 degree day with 100% humidity in the winter is a humid day, um, but still, nonetheless, the humidity might still be 100%. In the summer season, it's pretty rare, aside from maybe early in the morning, for our relative humidity to be sky high. Usually it falls down pretty low in the afternoon, but still there's more moisture in the air, even though the, the relative humidity is quite a bit lower. So giving the dew point temperature whether it be 70 or 50 or 30, it's just a more, it, it's, a, it's a better way to communicate how much water is in the atmosphere. We had a lot of water in the atmosphere yesterday. Here's a look at the last 36 hours uh, worth of dew points. Now, before our storms really rolled through, uh, we had plenty of juice in the atmosphere yesterday with dew points in the lower 70s. Now, that's not uncommon around here in the summer season, but for most people, that's pretty, pretty uncomfortable. Once the dew point drops below 60, it becomes much more comfortable for most people. And once it drops below 50, that's that's magic. <laughs> In the summer season, that is a real treat. And much like we had about this time last week, we have dew points this evening in the lower 40s. So a very, very cool June 22nd today. 65 was the high this afternoon. After 54 this morning, we recorded a hundredth of an inch with a couple of overnight showers. Now, this was not the coolest high temperature on today's date, although it comes in second place. Interesting uh, records today. Uh, that should say 55 degrees, not 55 inches. Uh, 55 degrees, our record low maximum today on June 22nd, 1972. Now, the second coolest before today was 68. So this record really stands out. Now, we did have quite a bit of rain on this date back on June 22nd, 1972. What was pretty impressive about today is we only did 65 with the sun about as strong as it gets. Now, it was pretty cloudy all morning, of course, but we had almost full sunshine this afternoon. No rain. Minimal cloud cover in the afternoon. We still were a good 16 degrees cooler than the average. All right, quick word about uh, yesterday's severe weather. Here's a look at uh, the last 36 hours worth of storm reports. We've got the map kind of zoomed in on Pittsburgh. The reason for that is the uh, National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh did a storm sur survey today and found EF0 tornado damage along the Allegheny and Butler County line, north of downtown Pittsburgh, closer to Moon Township, and closer to Mars, actually. Always interesting names in Western PA. You have Moon and you have Mars. Uh, this was uh, actually closer to Mars than uh, than Moon. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this prompted a tornado warning yesterday, and it turns out there was a tornado on the ground for a couple of minutes. Again, right along the Allegheny-Butler line, they found winds uh, or damage that was uh, commensurate with 70-mile-per-hour uh, winds. So uh, a low-end EF0 tornado at about 2.55 yesterday afternoon. All right, the weather is quiet here locally this evening. It's going to stay that way. It's been rainy and stormy along the East Coast. Severe weather threat this evening is confined to parts of the Corn Belt, Iowa, back into Nebraska as well, where a severe thunderstorm watch is out. Boy, crispy cool tonight. And I dare say this is the last time we're going to see the 40s until sometime in August. And some of the cooler spots tonight can be 42, 43, sure. We have uh, 47 for our official forecast tonight. That'll be hopefully the verification at the airport, but nobody lives at the airport. Where people live in some of the cooler sheltered valleys, it could be 42, 43, uh, first thing tomorrow morning. There'll be an increase in uh, some fair weather clouds midday and afternoon tomorrow. The sky will turn partly sunny as opposed to just bright and sunny, but still, this is a nice day. We'll get into the mid-70s. 
sunshine and abundance for Thursday. Warmer Thursday, still not humid, still not humid yet on Friday, even though this will be a toasty day with an increase in high clouds along this warm front uh, midday hours on Friday. Boy, that will be the end of the dry air, though, because by the weekend, a much more moisture-laden air mass will push in. We're going to be back uh, in the upper 60s and lower 70s for dew points this weekend and into early next week. Now, there's going to be probably some sort of a front that's going to try to going to try to kind of hang out somewhere around here. Uh, the vis Because we're close enough to that front and with the warm and muggy and unstable air mass, we're going to have some spotty showers and storms in our forecast for the weekend. But unlike this past weekend, it doesn't seem to me that uh, this boundary will be close enough and the upper level atmospheric conditions will be conducive to a lot of severe weather. But some run-of-the-mill gully washer thunderstorms, I think, are going to be possible Saturday and again on Sunday, and that'll be the case into early next week as well. Maybe we get a, a legit frontal passage at some point next week, but we've got at least three, four, five days worth of pretty pretty uh, notable humidity, along with some fairly warm temperatures, although probably not 90. Interesting weather pattern setting up as we head into the weekend. Look at this big, stout ridge along the West Coast. There's going to be all-time June temperature records threatened in places such as Seattle, Portland, down into California as well in a big stout ridge off the coast of New England. In between, there's a trough, and we're kind of closer to the ridge than the trough, so yeah, it's going to be pretty warm. You know, again, we're not talking 90s, but this is a pretty steamy weekend forecast, and that'll be true into early next week as well. Pretty amplified June pattern here. Ridge, trough, ridge, like that. And again, we'll be more under the influence of that east coast ridge. So look how far above average temperatures we'll get out in the Pacific Northwest by this weekend, uh, kind of at the edge of our uh, color table here. We're talking 25 degrees above average in places like Oh Spokane, uh, and maybe as far south as Boise. Our temperatures will be much, much closer to the average. Quick look at the longer range then. Uh, this does not look like a real hot pattern. It doesn't look like an abnormally cool pattern for us. But in the 8 to 14 day outlook, which will take us, of course, through the very end of June and into the first week of July, uh, the pattern uh, should come out in the wash as either near average or maybe slightly above average, but I don't see anything remarkable temperature-wise rounding out June and starting July. Thanks for watching the Tuesday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you right back here on Wednesday.